getting down to the, the core question of, of belief and separation in the sense that in reality it's impossible uh, to separate from God. And so this is a crazy belief. This is why Jesus calls it a tiny mad idea. He doesn't call it a tiny sane idea. He calls it a tiny mad idea. It's a blip. It's a puff of nothingness. But, but the, the actual belief, we'll say, in separation is the belief that there could be more than everything. You know, it's the belief that, it's a belief in impossibility, is what it is. And then the world is simply, this is the ego's world. God did not create this world. Uh, what business would God having, creating a world of fragmentation, of separation, of pain, suffering, disease, if God is all-knowing and all-loving and all-powerful, then what business does God have with this world? You know, even though the Bible, Genesis, and uh, you know, stories and all kinds of traditions always are trying to, oh, God was bored with all that oneness and bliss and happiness, and He decided to make up a little duality, you know, a little multiplicity for a little spice and anything. Come on! You know, it's like, at some point you you have to start to realize that these, these kind of stories that try to explain the impossible are impossible themselves. Uh, you know, how can you connect a God of love to, to a distorted perceptual world where there seems to be so many problems? And of course, everybody kind of somewhat or another has, has to kind of face that and wrestle with that. You know, some people become atheists. They go, I'm not going to believe in God because anything that would have anything to do with this world is not worth believing in. And then you have your theologians that will have long, intricate things. Well, you know, God is, God gave us free will and look what we did with it. Is that supposed to put God off the hook? And thanks for nothing. Uh, thanks for that free will there, I really appreciate that. I know I used it for a little pain and suffering, but, you know. In fact, you know, if you take it back to Genesis, you know, there's Adam and Eve, and, the, and it's like, it's paradise, la 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 la, paradise, 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 and then, and then somehow, with all this paradise going on, there's a tree. Uh, it's like that damn tree. You know, it's like paradise, paradise, la 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 la. And then a tree of what? A tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, anyone who had any kind of sanity would probably ask the very first question, why was the tree there? Was the tree there? I mean, isn't that a basic question, you know? I mean, why I've had, won't anyone ever answer that question? Yeah, yeah. and why won't anybody... Exactly. <laughs> and why, when you raise that question, do people say, Never. talk about something else, or change the <laughs> subject, or something like this? So, so why would there, why would God put such a tree in such a beautiful garden of paradise? Mm -hmm. And in A Course in Miracles, Jesus comes right out. He actually addresses this very topic in his text, and he said he wouldn't, and he didn't. Oh, now he's overturning Genesis. You know. <laughs> he's going back after Genesis. Jesus didn't come along till the New Testament. Now he's going back and he's going after Genesis. But it's it's good. Someone's finally addressing these things. You know. Basically, in the, in the text of A Course in Miracles, Jesus says, God would never put you in such a position. Well, hallelujah! <laughs> Thank you for saying that. It, you know, let's get it straight. Let's get it right straight. So, so, but we have this concept, or this belief in duality. You know, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's tied in with the error, you know. To believe in duality, that's an error. If everything is pure oneness, then to believe in duality, that's an error. This very error is, has to be exposed. In other words, Jesus says we have to look together upon this error and see its falsity. 
we have to look at it instead of projecting it to the world. And this whole world was made by the ego just as like a dumping ground, as a giant hall of mirrors, as, as a big trick, uh, which is an attempt to, to see the duality in the world instead of in the mind. That, that this whole world was made as a giant hiding place. Now, if we go back to the Genesis story, we can pull from a little bit in this net. It's like, there was this la 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 la, this paradise, paradise. Adam and Eve are like, you know, they're at the disco and they're dancing, you know. Ha, 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 staying alive. Ha, 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 ha. They're, Adam and Eve, they're like having a good time. You know, it's a party. They're, it's, a, it's paradise and everything. And then at some point in there, it's like, they knew that they were naked. <laughs> Sounds almost like that Course in Miracles book that just got published up here in Canada. What was it? Something about something about naked. naked or something. Yeah, something about naked and loving it or something. I don't know what it was. It was this best, best author's thing. Anyway, at some point, they're having this great party. It's paradise, and all of a sudden, they knew they were naked, and it was like a sense of shame. And already there's this shame projected out onto the bodies. What's wrong with naked? I mean, you know, Tarzan, Jane, what's the what's the big deal with naked? You know, naked clothes, not it was and what did they do? They grabbed the closest fig leaf uh, to cover up. And this is still going on today. These are like this is like the orange fig leaf and the green fig leaf. You know, it's like we you know, here we go. This stuff is still going on, it's like a covering. They covered themselves. Well, if I would bring it back to more of a, let's leave the, the snakes and the, the trees and the fig leaves out of it. Psychically, when, when the mind seemed to believe in this crazy mad idea, this puff of nothingness, took it seriously, forgot to laugh, just took it seriously, the cosmos was made as a cosmic fig leaf. A cosmic fig leaf. A big bang fig leaf for the mind. You have genitals, you grab a fig leaf, you know, you have a big bang with stars and dust and black holes, fig leaf's not going to do it, you know, you, you gotta, you, you just use the whole, the whole cosmos is a cosmic fig leaf for this belief in shame and guilt. So it's just, it just seems to be on a bigger scale than covering genitals, you know, it's just covering Let's cover the mind. Let's cover the guilt with a big cosmic uh, fig leaf. So, so then you start to, to realize that, that, that you have to start to look within and face the shame and expose the shame and see it for the nothingness that it is instead of trying to project it to time and space and say, Oh, it was that night out with my boyfriend's having sex that gave me the, the cold sore. Or was smoking all those cigarettes for those years that gave me the cancer. Or why did I have to get born into a family where there was this genetic heart disease, or this genetic whatever anomaly, this, this lung disease, whatever it was. Why keep projecting the, the guilt, the shame, out time and space as if time and space is the cause, as if time and space is the culprit, when A Course in Miracles is coming along and is saying, it's not, the problem isn't in time and space. The problem is in the belief in your mind, in the separation, that made up the time and space as the big cosmic fig leaf, so we don't have to project it. In the end, that's why we're we are in great need of forgiveness, which is just releasing the error. Because as we release the error, we are able to recognize the power of thought and recognize that, that the error has no consequence. In other words, what Jesus says is, as soon as the error of separation, the belief in separation, seem to arise, simultaneously, Simultaneously with the belief, the answer was given. It's not like there was a hesitation, like a pause, 
like in heaven, like like God and the angels went, uh oh, oh damn. Uh, <laughs> we didn't say we didn't say <laughs> we were just having so much fun in eternity, and damn, they've gone on and it's a rebel, it's a rebellion down there. It's a separation. They've got no, no. It's not solved. Solved. As quick as you could even have the thought, the tiny tick of time, the little tiny man idea, the separation was was solved the instant that it seemed to arise. Now, the if you still believe in linear time, that that solution isn't going to do you any good. If you still believe in it, if you still want time to be true, the correction's right there. Like going, I'm right here. I love you. <laughs> I haven't gone anywhere. Choose me now. Save yourself some misery and choose me now. You know, it's like that that correction didn't go anywhere. That correction is still there in mind. But the, we'll say the mind that believed in the separation, it, it ran away. It had shame, it had guilt. I think it did something wrong. It's like it's like putting your hand in the cosmic cookie jar when your mom's looking the other way and trying to steal a cookie. Quick! Hide it. Don't, hide it. Don't let it be seen. <laughs>